Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jamie here from Urban Zoo Mania, and today I'm gonna to be trying to make a waterfall bioactive enclosure for a crested gecko. This will be my first time trying this, and recently we found a deal on used exoterras on Craigslist. So now that I have a surplus of tanks, I think I'm going to give some to my friends and try to build them some setups and try to do some things that I never thought I could as well. So let's go see what we can do. To the video, let's meet some of the animals we're doing the tank upgrades for. Here is Buddha, my juvenile crescent gecko. She weighs about 17 grams now and is ready for a larger tank. Alright, so meet our superstar Tiny Tyson. He is a Rachidactylus lichianus gecko and he's only about a month and a half old so unfortunately we won't be putting him right into his enclosure but once he gets more weight he will be joining the others in an upgraded vivarium. But not least, meet Magool, my other male crested gecko, and he really deserves a larger enclosure. We recently upgraded his current enclosure, but he really needs more space, and I'm excited to see what he will do in his new setup. So here's all the tanks that we got. There's another 24 by 18 by 18, 20 gallon has this in it. Don't know if we're even going to keep this tank. It's pretty rough. I definitely don't want to use any of this foam. Um, two 10 gallons. I don't know what this is. If that means it's broken or what. We'll just have to see. Uh, looks like it is broken. So one 10 gallon I'd say. We have this tank right here. I like it because it's like my first tank that I've ever had that you just open in the front like this. And it doesn't have like two openings. I kind of like that because you can see through it more. But this is its lid, right? And its lid is like completely broken. Like We'd have to replace it to be able to use it. Okay, the next one is this one. I love this tank. It has really cool dimensions. It's an Exoterra. has a ton of mineral deposits on it as well. We'll have to see if we can get those off. We've been triple cleaning them to see if this will help. Here's the lid. They also need clean. And there's a bunch of rust. So maybe we can get like a new gasket and put a new stainless steel mesh in it. And here, we got three 10 gallons. So then that would be four or five 10 gallons, I guess. This is the next tank. It's really interesting because it has a lock on it and it also has so many options for ventilation. It has the top, a side panel over here, and a this little... This is also for um, water flow, for like a mister or something. Oh, okay. If you look at it here, it's the right size to put a bunch of different holes. So you can put little tubes in through there. we're going to use for our upgrades today and they're all cleaned up. They were triple washed and razor bladed and we also replaced the screening on top. And we're going to start here with the drainage layer. Oh, 
easier during tank builds and for maintenance. I do have bottles of spring water, tap water, and distilled for different purposes throughout the tank builds. Here's how messy the plant room was while I was rearranging everything. Our drainage layer that we made out of lava rock, we made a window screen mesh layer to make sure that debris and substrate does not get in the bottom to clog up the filter that we're going to be using for our waterfall. We want that water to be able to be filtering bacteria and debris but not have so much where it's going to clog over time. giant mountain of ABG mix and lava rock on one side. <laughs> I'm using so much ABG mix just because I like to make my scapes go all the way up to that black line on the exoterra to kind of help with your vision of scale. And here's the overall waterfall. We are trying to figure out which place to place the tubing and see how the water flow actually you can play around with this in many different angles and achieve different results that you're looking for. So this was very satisfying but also very challenging part of the build. I ended up using a nail, cutting the tubing to size and nailing it to the top of the piece of the wood. Don't know if this is the smartest thing to do, but we're gonna keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't rust, and replace if we need to. Here are some of my plant options I'm going to be using for our escapes today. You can see an alocasia there, we have some syngoniums, we have a begonia, we are having some bromeliads, we're trying all different kinds of things and seeing what's going to grow best and take over the tank and look great overall. We started planting the tank here and I'm putting spag moss in places I thought was appropriate. Eventually, later on, I found out that this was way too much spag moss. I really don't like having a top layer of just spag moss. Maybe in some places it's okay, but um, it ended up causing a lot of mold. So, here is an in-process shot of the waterfall. projects I make such a big mess and I just want to film it every now and then for you guys because this isn't something that you get into if you're not planning on spending a lot of time doing it. <laughs> Things get out of whack and out of the ordinary real quick. obviously my favorite part of tank builds and that is activating the tank yeah you spray it everywhere get it as moist as you possibly can and then it's ready to go life starts forming so we'll wait about two weeks for these plants to get root and let a natural mold, mold process go through and then we will put Magul in his new cool 
waterfall enclosure. I'm so excited. And here's the final setup two weeks later and yeah, Magul's in here. I'm surprised how well the plants have all rooted in and he really hasn't messed up too much. Definitely um, one piece of cork got out of the way so I added in a new cork hide for him on the, on the right you'll see. And he also knocked down some of the baby tears on the waterfall but it's growing back nicely. The flame moss has been coming back like crazy, or peacock fern, you some people call it. And yeah, just some new pieces of cork bark and mopani wood were added. But there's a bunch of different crevices he can go and hide in. I'm really excited about this tank build, guys. I think it's gonna work out great for the guy that's used to such small space. poop on the glass and I didn't wipe it but guys that's the reality of keeping these animals it's gonna be some poop sometimes I'm really surprised about how well the iso the powdered orange isopods have been keeping up with the waste of him they've been doing great in this setup I'm so excited to see how it changes down the line And I had to get you guys a glimpse of Magul and what he's been up to. Usually he likes to sleep in the back of the tank during the day. And here's a glimpse of him doing that now. Here's his little tail. Hi! Nice tail, buddy! I love seeing him move around in this thing at night. It's like a demon took over this palace. This waterfall palace. So cute. I've been referring to this tank as the tank of balance because I really wanted to use this tank as a sign that I can use the forces from the aquascaping hobby and from what I've learned in the bioactive reptile keeping hobby to make something unique and special all to its own. Also, I've put minerals in the bottom of his waterfall in order to trap some nice healing energy of different forces all together. Hopefully whenever I'm doing office work and housework around the house, every time I get a glimpse of this, I know that it'll bring me some inner peace. So here's the amethyst tank, guys. This is the tank build that I made for my Lichianus gecko. I think it's a little bit ambitious for a lychee tank because of all the fragile little plants and the whole scale of the setup. But hopefully with a giant log in the back and some big pork hides that he will actually do quite well in the setup. We'll have to see though because he's not in here yet. I'm planning on waiting about a month to two months. Hopefully he'll get bigger by then and then we can all witness him enjoy this new setup.
guys, making this tank has been a dream come true for me. I saved up money from my job for weeks. I've saved up cool plants that I've found in all different kinds of locations. And I've really put my heart and soul into building these tanks and I'm so glad I was able to record this so that you guys could see my dreams come true. on Facebook and Instagram have been asking me what are those plants that carpet all over the tank and that's actually red stemmed silver baby tears the one on the back of the bark and the one on the floor of this tank is just regular baby tears looking for a light to grow plants is at Walmart they sell shop lights that are only $21 and as long as you get the 5000k one you can put it above some plants and get some great plant growth. I can't wait to see Tiny Tyson just running in and out of this cork hollow and seeing him play around at night time. I just think he is going to love it and we'll have plenty of time for the plants to take root in hopes that they'll remain intact. Here is Buddha's tank upgrade. Now this is the tree of life tank that I made for her. Look how much she loves it. She has been hiding in all different kinds of places and I usually can't even find her throughout the day. And she really has not had too much of an impact on her tank at all. As you can see, the plants have taken root and they are just going crazy in this kind of setup. The extra ventilation is working great on the right side. This is the tank that you saw in the beginning with the locking mechanism. I also got these natural birch twigs to cross in the front. They look great and they're nice and flexible. She loves hanging on them. Here's this tree of life that really centers my goals and I really enjoy looking at this every day. I can't wait to see how it grew, grows in. This tank is really inspiring and it was one of the last ones that I did that I think I spent the most time on. not actually 95 I just misted it and the hydrometer got a little bit wet so I apologize for if, if that threw anybody off you shouldn't be keeping your crested gecko at 95% humidity <laughs> different hiding spots I made for her and planned in the setup but it's really up to her to see where she likes to hide. I find crusted geckos like to hide in the most weird and crazy locations in their tank.
that's pretty much it for today. I'm kind of all project out for the time being. But definitely consider subscribing because I have plenty of new content and projects on the works right now. And I'm really excited to share them with you. What did you guys think of my tank builds today? Did you like them? Do you think that I can improve them somehow? Please let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you next time on the Urban Zoomania. Okay, goodbye.